At first glance, Flimlock the Siege of Dawn totally looks like a Souls-like. It's got dodging, it's got parrying, it's got that risk of losing all of your hard-earned experience points. But the more I play this game, the more it feels like God of War rather than Dark Souls. Flimlock follows the story of Nor, who's a warrior that has sworn to fight off the undead. But after attempting to close the door that the undead come through, she winds up opening it wider than it's ever been. But after forming a shaky alliance with a lesser god named Enki, the two set off to make things right again. Any hint of trickery and I'll be burying this act into your skull. I would expect nothing less. The fighting in Flintlock is mostly melee focused, but there is a sprinkling of ranged attacks as well. Enemy attacks can be parried with a well-timed block, which leaves them vulnerable to counterattacks. But you can also interrupt an enemy attack, whether it's blockable or not, by using a quick shot from Nora's pistol. Firearms can also be used to soften up enemies from a distance, but I rather enjoyed blowing up any barrels they might be standing next to. However, some enemies do wear armor, which makes them kind of impervious to physical attacks until you can break it off. You can use a well-timed parry to break off some armor pieces, but you can also use magic attacks to build your enemy's stun bar. And this is where Enki comes in, so while you're doing your regular attacks in your combat, you can ask Enki to do some attacks as well, which is basically him just swooping in and building up this little purple bar above your enemy's health bar. And between your own attacks and Enki attacks, you're eventually going to be able to do a devastating attack, which will strip the enemy of their armor and make them very vulnerable to all attacks. <laughs> Balancing these three focuses in combat really gives you the ability to take control of situations as you learn what works for your playstyle. And you can take things a step further in Flintlock with the way it handles progression. Just like Norse combat abilities, the progression tree is broken up into three columns, again for melee, gunpowder, and magic. And when you unlock an upgrade within one of these focuses, you not only gain a new ability, but you also get stronger in that focus. For example, if you unlock a new melee combo, you're also going to do more melee damage overall. As new maneuvers are unlocked, across the three focuses, Nor's combat potential distinctly gets better. This results in a lot more control and efficiency in combat, but it also makes fights go a lot faster. Simply put, the game gets more fun the more you continue to level up. One of my favorite abilities allows you to charge your axe before an attack. And this is awesome for obvious reasons. You start the fight off with a big strong hit, but if you use this fiery axe called the Harbinger's Axe, it creates this explosion at the area of impact. Not only does it do a chunk of damage to enemies in the area, but they all start burning, which slowly takes away at their health. I actually love the way the weapons in this game are handled, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Rather than enhancing Nor's defense, armor is used as a way to fine tune your combat and add perks to what you're doing. You've got armor pieces that are gonna enhance how fast your gunpowder regenerates, but you've also got armor pieces that slow down time when you do a successful dodge. So the more armor you find in Flintlock, the more options you've got when it comes to combat potential. And if you equip a matching set of armor from the same armor set, then their shared benefits are increased. On top of finding more armor, you can also find gemstones for Enki that changes the way his magic works. And of course you can find new melee weapons and firearms as well. You're not just going from one weak pistol to the next stronger pistol, you're finding pistols that have different firing rates. And once you find weapons that you really enjoy that you want to start investing in, that's when you start upgrading them at each camp. You're gonna find some of this great gear just by doing quests, but the good stuff is found by exploration. You're gonna spend most of your time in this game exploring on foot, but you can unlock warp rifts that allow Enki to bring north through the air. In some instances, these rifts act as shortcuts through difficult areas so you can finally get back to a save point. But in the open world, rifts are more like aerial puzzles. Navigating a set of these rifts will allow the player to reach otherwise unreachable areas that will likely contain a piece of gear. And rifts act as shortcuts in the open world area areas as well, so there's literally no reason not to unlock as many as you can. It's fun to take detours in this game, and sometimes there's something waiting for you at the end of these detours, whether it be a chest or a giant boss protecting a chest. Main quests in Flintlock are fairly straightforward. They see Nor and Enki taking on challenge after challenge, freeing different areas of the map and taking on undead hordes and mad gods as they go. And the side quests are not only a great way to score more experience points and loot, but they're a really nice way to learn more about the game's setting. What happened to the rest of them? They're out of the picture. I'm sorry, they didn't leave me any choice. 
Damn it. Outside of Nor and Enki, the characters in this game are not particularly memorable. But I would much rather this than having an annoying cast of characters that I just can't stand. They all do their job in setting up the game's story, and for me, that is just fine. When it comes to the difficulty in Flintlock, it's worth starting off by saying you can play this game on easy, regular, or hard. I've been playing it on regular because that seems to be the intended way to enjoy this game, and I'm actually really glad I'm doing this. And that is because some of these enemies are really cheap in the way they telegraph their attacks. And some of these attacks just come out of nowhere and I'm okay with there being surprises. I understand that maybe I should be blocking more. There is no stamina bar in this game, so there's really nothing wrong with blocking all the time. But there were some instances against certain enemies where I just felt completely blindsided by the next move they did. And on the normal difficulty, this is not a big deal because the attacks aren't one-shot kills. But I imagine on the harder difficulties that these attacks get a little more beefy, so when you get jabbed out of nowhere, it's gonna be really frustrating that you lost all this progress in a fight. But I am finding that as the game progresses, the difficulty is quickly becoming very leveled out. Nor is just getting so powerful and I'm getting such good gear and I'm upgrading the gear I like that she's becoming a bit of a powerhouse in fights. So I could imagine that this game gets a lot more fun if you're playing on like a new game plus where you've got all of your abilities unlocked and you start fresh. But the thing that really won me over with Flintlock was the fact that it just feels more fun the more you play it. The more stuff you unlock, the more competent you feel in combat and the more fun it is to unlock more things. And the game's approach to armor and weapons makes me genuinely excited for getting a new piece of armor or a new weapon because it's not just an upgrade from something old that I had, it's a completely new piece. And I do hope you give this game a shot. The demo is free to try on Steam and the game itself is $40 in the US and that's fairly priced in my opinion. At the very least, add it to your wish list so that you know when it goes on sale. Either way, let me know in the comments if you still think that Flintlock Siege of Dawn is actually a souls like. Also, if there's any games that you want me to cover, put those in the comments as well. If you like this video, then make sure you like the video. If you really like this video and you want to see more of this, then make sure you subscribe to my channel. And finally, thank you very much for letting me talk your ear off about Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn, and I will see you in the next video.